What's up guys? Welcome to this, uh, what I'm calling an advanced tutorial series on the TFDI MD11 that is uh, slated to release on July 2nd. By the time you're watching this video, it will probably be out, but I wanted to get this video out there ahead of time. So for those of you that are uh, interested in purchasing this aircraft or new to the MD11, have something that you can reference for learning how to fly it. Um, I am your host, Mustafa. You can find me streaming over on Twitch about three days a week, flying mostly, doing mostly Flight Simulator, but occasionally some other things as well. And I would love to have you come and check that out and uh, join the fun over there. If you have any questions or comments about this series, please leave them in the comments below. I try to read all the comments and uh, answer them as much as I can. And uh, if you would like faster responses or uh, more input and uh, a better pool of people to ask, I would encourage you to join our Discord community or the Moose Lodge. Uh, the link to that Discord is down in the description below. So please feel free to come over and click that. And finally, if you find this uh, content helpful, I would ask that you hit that like and subscribe button so that you can help me grow the channel. It really does help. So as I mentioned before, I'm calling this an advanced tutorial series. I'm uh, kind of thinking through how I've done tutorials in the past. And I think there's uh, now with this, uh, there are really three levels to them, and so I'm classifying them as such. Uh, you have what I would call a standard flight tutorial, which is uh, just a single video of me flying an aircraft and talking through it and kind of showing you how to do it from takeoff to landing. Uh, that's the, the basic level for me anyway. Uh, and then you have what, uh, what this is, what I'm calling an advanced tutorial series, in which the case the tutorial is broken up through multiple videos, and goes relatively deep uh, to cover systems without the video being too videos being too long. So trying to keep the videos between 30 and 45 minutes at a maximum and allows you to kind of look at the individual areas where you're uh, interested in most and will usually conclude with a three-part series of a full flight, take uh, setup and, uh, and engine start, take off climb, and then finally uh, descent and landing in that order. And uh, that's what this is. Then you have the final level, the highest level, which we've uh, now dubbed the Masterclass. And that uh, there's only one of those so far. That's the Mad Dog Masterclass, specifically aimed at the MD-82 from Leonardo. And that is uh, really in-depth. It's, it's what it's called. It's a Masterclass. And it's also broken up by multiple videos, but we really go in-depth into systems and those kinds of things like that. And uh, so that way you can not only fly the aircraft, but uh, troubleshoot the aircraft in the event you have failures on and things can go wrong. So why aren't we doing a masterclass level with this aircraft? Well, there's a few reasons. So the first reason is um, there isn't failures modeled yet. So there's not really a reason to go too in-depth into systems because you don't have to troubleshoot them. You just have to know what buttons to push to make this work. I think we're getting failures eventually on this. I'm not sure. But as of right now, we really don't have them. So there's that. Secondly, this is a... Uh, right now, a beta build that I'm using, um, this is actually 1.0. Supposedly, this is the release candidate, but uh, they might change a few things even still from uh, this video. Um, but there is, uh, there's no manual yet that comes with this. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have access to that that I'm aware of anyway. Um, the liveries have been, you know, in flux. And so, so there's a number of things that are still kind of like waiting. You know, when I did the Mad Dog Masterclass video, the Leonardo had been out for over a year. And so uh, anything that was kind of broken or still needed to be tweaked had been well tweaked by that point. So uh, we're at a very early stage of this. I want to get this video out so that way people have a reference and, and have some help for it. But I don't even have the ability to go too in-depth. One, because some of the systems aren't quite complete. The important ones are, and that's why they're releasing it. Uh, but two, I also don't have a reference manual from TFDI to see how they've modeled, what they've modeled, it's just my experience and comparing to the real real world manuals that I have. And that's helpful, but it doesn't allow me to go as in-depth as I'd like. So there's that as well. So those are the primary reasons why this is not a masterclass video. Also, the masterclass video takes a lot of time to research and a lot of time to prep. And I uh, kind of, now that we found, I found out this is releasing on July 2nd while we were at Expo. And so I don't have that kind of time to uh, go into all that. So those are all the reasons why we're doing this as an advanced tutorial series and not a masterclass series. I might do a masterclass on this uh, once we have this further down the road and uh, supplant this uh, tutorial series, but we'll see. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and do a quick little uh, walk around the aircraft, kind of see what it's all about from the outside, and then we'll get into the uh, um, flight tablet 
uh, inside the aircraft as well. So anyway, here we go. Uh, this is the uh, the MD-11. It is a very large aircraft. It is uh, uh, very obviously identified by the fact that it has three engines. It's a tri-jet. So we've got uh, two engines on the wing and one up here in a pod uh, on the uh, vertical stabilizer. Uh, this is the GE engine variant. Uh, TFDI is also going to be supplying the Pratt & Whitney variant. It is not coming out on release day on July 2nd, and that is due to the fact that there are still uh, a number of tweaks needed for the uh, Pratt & Whitney engines to make them function correctly. They're a little squirrely at the moment. So uh, while we do have the uh, access to the Pratt's in the collector's edition, the public will not get access to the Pratt's right away. They will come later as a uh, free update. Uh, you can also always tell the MD-11 by the fact that uh, you can distinguish it from the DC-10 by the fact that it actually has winglets. The DC-10 did not have winglets. Um, I believe the wings are a little bit longer on the MD-11, not by much. I mean, it's not something you would ever notice unless you were comparing them, like, laid up against each other or something, so it's not really a good way to tell the difference. The winglets are generally the best identifier to tell the difference. The other uh, thing that denotes the MD-11 uh, from other aircraft is we have this uh, center gear. Uh, so you actually have three back here. And you may notice sometimes uh, out in the wild that you might see an MD-11 with no center gear. And that's because the center gear is, uh, is selectable from the flight deck. So once you raise the gear, you can inhibit the uh, center gear from coming back down. I, I don't really understand why you would do that aside from maybe saving some wear and tear on the, uh, on the tires. Uh, the freighter version has a couple of uh, cargo holds on the belt on uh, under the belly here and then obviously the large cargo door that we saw over on the side here the uh, left side uh, for loading the main deck full of cargo uh, you actually see cargo pallets in there right now because there's weight on the airplane I can turn that off and you'll see an empty cargo deck it's kind of cool that they did that and uh, obviously this door is uh, toggleable as well the stairs you see here are a product of GSX so uh, there are no stairs built into the aircraft uh, model, so if you don't have something like GSX or some other kind of ground handling uh, service, you won't see stairs here. So don't be like, wait, where are my stairs? That's, that's, that's GSX. Uh, that's a separate program available from FS Dream Team. I do highly recommend it, although a lot of people find it to be buggy. I don't find it to be very buggy. I think a lot of people just don't know how to read the manual. But that's not what this video is about, so we're going to move on. Uh, so we're talking about this this video is really just an overview of the uh, of the MD-11 we're gonna go ahead and jump at the cockpit here and uh, show you the cockpit the cockpit is very nicely modeled and uh, and very detailed it's it's absolutely beautiful it's a work of art and uh, we do have a, a working door so you can walk back into the cabin per se and uh, there's the door right there um, you can actually look down into the back of the cargo area and you see the pallets there that are the, uh, the bins, I guess. Uh, there's a nice little seating area for anybody else that you might have on board the aircraft uh, besides the uh, pilots flying. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very beautifully modeled. You can close the door, obviously, and lock the cockpit out. The door is actually lockable, too. Uh, if you close this and hit the, uh, the deny switch here, it actually keeps you from opening the door. So... Uh, good on you, TFDI. Well done. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, very beautiful aircraft. Like I said, we got uh, three uh, engine levers there for the uh, the throttles because there's three engines. Uh, it, Unlike the DC-10, its predecessor, uh, it's very digital. So we got uh, six digital displays across the front here. All these are CRT uh, screens. And, uh, and then on the overhead, which we'll go over in the next video, or uh, I think it's the next video. Maybe it's the one after that. Uh, it is... Uh, yeah, cockpit familiarization. We're going to talk about all these, but uh, so you have all of your systems are set up here, but they also have a bunch of system switches which put the systems into manual or auto mode. And in auto mode, you really don't have to touch anything. It kind of does it for you. So it's a very easy aircraft to fly. The biggest thing with this aircraft uh, are two, two things, in my opinion. One is the flight characteristics are a little different in this aircraft. And the real thing was kind of a handful too. Uh, because of the, the characteristics of the, the airframe and, and how it was designed, uh, especially on landing, it had a tendency to bounce. And uh, in fact, that bounce caused a very, very horrible accident in uh, Tokyo of a FedEx MD-11 uh, when they tried to just get it on the ground and it bounced a number of times and then it ended up rolling over. It was, it was bad. So y there are, tr landing can be a little tricky. 
And in fact, without the computer augmentation helping you land, which not not I'm, I'm not talking about ILS or anything, there's actually the computer system helps helps the pilot have the right feel for the aircraft. Uh, without that active, it's really a bear to land. And, and earlier versions of this, that was not uh, modeled yet, and it really was a bear uh, to uh, to get right. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the other the other aspect of this aircraft is its autopilot, and that is. It's a little kind of hybridish uh, between um, of a, almost. It's very similar to a, an Airbus model autopilot, but it's its own thing. It's different, and so there's a lot of push pull stuff you've got to know, and you've got to just understand how this thing functions. And it doesn't function uh, traditionally as most of us would think, like with like a Boeing autopilot. It's like I said, it's much more similar to an Airbus. So those are the two things that are probably going to trip you up the most in this aircraft. Beyond that, it's an airplane, it flies. So uh, it shouldn't be too difficult for the average uh, sim pilot to get into, but you are going to want to watch out for some things. Uh, the other part of this video we're going to talk about is the uh, EFB, the flight tablet. This is where, unlike the uh, Mad Dog, the Leonardo Mad Dog, where you have a uh, load manager, uh, this is the end-all be-all for the systems and, and options on this aircraft. We don't really do anything through the FMC. It's all done on the tablet. And I don't believe there's a way to, to take the tablet away or trigger it off. It's just always here. So uh, you would also see it's plugged in. So it won't it won't die. You can oh you can take it away <laughs> as I lie. Uh, but if you put that there, you can bring it back. So so yeah, if you don't like that sitting there after a while, you can actually put it away. I was gonna think it just unplugged it, but no, it takes the whole thing away. See, I'm learning too. All right. So uh, starting, uh, we're going to start here, but not, <laughs> I'm going to explain why, uh, because this is the first page, normally this is what you would do first, but because you're going to be setting this up for the first time, the first thing you want to do is look at some of your options. So let's just paw through this here real fast and see what's all here, and then we'll go into depth. So obviously you have your dispatch page, this is where you can import your flight plan from Simbri. If you don't have to do this, but if you want to use the features of the tablet, uh, to do certain things, you're going to want to do this, and why not? So uh, you're going to have to uh, assign your SimBrief username to this. I'll show you where to do that in a second, but that's where this is. Payload is where you can set up your payload. You can either do it by, uh, this says passenger and cargo, which this is the freighter version, so it doesn't have any passenger numbers. It just says cargo and fuel, uh, and then you can also do this by zero fuel weight. So this is if you want to manually load it. So if you um, don't want to use this option to load the aircraft, uh, then you would come here to do this. And I'm going to use this. It, it defaults to zero. That's not what actually on here right now. That's what it's about to do if I hit set payload. So I'm going to do that. You're going to see the aircraft kind of shudder a little bit as it adapts the new weights. And now if we come out here, you'll see that the, uh, the cargo deck is now empty because we don't have any payloads. There you go. So there is the empty cargo deck uh, right there. All ready to go. All right. So that, I'm just going to jump back over here, get back in here quick. Um, all right, so that is a payload. And you can also, once you've done that, you get this kind of other page that shows you the actually load factor. There's a 4% load, mainly from fuel. We got 15,000 pounds of fuel. No payload. Our zero fuel weight is 248.6 thousand pounds. Gross weight is uh, incorrect. So don't look at this. That says 15,000 pounds. That's not right. Uh, so that's clearly a bug that they haven't squashed yet. <laughs> so that's awkward. Uh, and uh, yeah, in fact, this is actually your, this is actually, the, these are flipped. Yeah, well, and actually this isn't right either. Zero fuel weight should be the empty weight of the airplane plus payload, and uh, that's it. And so it should just be the empty weight of the airplane. I don't think this thing weighs 248 by itself. Oh, maybe it does. No, that might be right. Yeah, two, yeah, 248 by itself. Yeah, that's right. So this is right. This should be this plus the fuel. So it's actually 15 plus that should be our gross weight right now. So anyway, there's some issues right there. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect on release, but it will be good enough to, to operate. Uh, perf, so we have uh, information for our uh, performance calculations. Uh, for the You put the ICAO code in here, the runways, the winds, the pressures, all that stuff, your takeoff weight. And you can get your V1, VR, and V2 speeds, your flux temperatures, and your flap settings. All right there. It's beautiful. Uh, charts. If you have Navigraph charts, you can sign in and access the charts right here on the tablet. Very nice feature. Uh, services. This is where you're going to uh, do things like the GPU, the uh, air start unit, wheel chocks, nose weight, so you don't tail tip. Uh, opening the cargo doors. The main is what's open right now, that big one. Then you've got the uh, one right, two right, and bulk cargo over on the... 
uh, over on the right hand side underneath the main deck. Uh, we've got passenger doors, uh, 1L, uh, 1, 1R, 4L, and 4R, and uh, obviously we only have the 1L open right now, so that's all right here. Uh, state. So obviously you can, uh, you can do cold and dark, ready to start, ready to fly, load last save. Uh, you can set any one of these as the default. I've got cold and dark set as my default because that's how I like to start the plane. Uh, but just clicking on those will activate those particular options. And then obviously setting as default will set them when you start the aircraft. Options. This is what you really want to look at when you uh, get in the aircraft and you have some, some general things. So screen brightness, first of all. This is going to be the, uh, the brightness of your various screens. Uh, weight units. If you uh, want to use metric, you can. If you want to use uh, what we call in America freedom units, <laughs> then that's the pounds over here. Uh, temperature units. Uh, generally, everything in aviation is centigrade, and so we've got that set there. Uh, allow hardware overforce. So what this is, is the autopilot will disconnect if you push the yoke uh, or turn the yoke far enough. Uh, you, can, uh, you can force over the autopilot. I've got it set to no right now because I think there was some issues with that being too sensitive. Um, I don't ever, I've got easy access to disconnect on my, on my hardware and I don't want little spikes to uh, randomly set that off, so I just hit no. Uh, automatic seatbelt behavior, um, I think this is, th oh yeah, so this is easier, when you're in auto, this will configure the seatbelts based on your configuration, so a lot of times I think flaps and slats and gear up, uh, will give you, uh, no seatbelt sign indication, and then putting the full slats out, I think, um, will then trigger the, uh, the seatbelts on, I think is what it is. Uh, automatic seatbelt behavior for the altitude will, will set it to um, the altitude setting. And I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a full-on manual for this yet because it's the clutch position. I'm assuming the manual will release with the, uh, the aircraft. And so we'll find out. I don't know what that altitude is that it sets that to. Or if it's configurable. It might be configurable somewhere uh, to tell it in the FMC or something. Uh, but let's just pretend it was, let's say it was 14,000 feet or 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet. You know, when you pass that altitude, seatbelts would go off and so on and so forth. But that's only if you have it in auto. If you, if you just keep it in on and off, then you do it yourself anyway. Uh, IRS align time. So the inertial reference unit, uh, you can set it to instant, fast, which this is probably like a 30 seconds or a minute uh, align time. The realistic is what I have it set to, and that's 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes to align the, uh, the inertial reference system. Uh, Manpaz defense system. I have no idea what this is, uh, to be perfectly honest, and so I leave it hidden because <laughs> I think I made it visible once and I didn't really notice anything, or it puts like a little pod underneath the aircraft. I have a, I have a feeling this has something to do with like flying this thing in like volatile war regions, and so it like helps it jam like surface to air missiles or something maybe i don't i have no idea uh if you know tell me in the comments i'd love to know what that is i don't think it actually does anything in the sim it just you know it's a visual thing uh extended range i have enabled this is something uh none of you will have access to because the er version was only available to those of us that were the uh collector's editions which you can see right here i'm number 178 that was the thousand of us that bought this aircraft for pre-order uh, a year and a half ago uh, we got the ability to be part of the beta and then also have access to the ER version. So I believe this will not be available to anybody in the standard versions. Uh, it just adds a, a little bit of extra range. Uh, your sim brief username, this is where you put that in so you can access your dispatch over there. Uh, if you have a hoppy login code, you put that there. I do have mine, but I haven't put it in yet. And then pause the top of descent if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, I don't like that, so I don't do that. Uh, there you go. And then make sure you hit save to save those options. In systems, we have a few things here. So automatic anti-ice, I have it disabled because I like to manage some things on my own at least. Uh, digital standby, that is uh, down here. So I'm using the analog standby because I like them better. Uh, so we get two gauges, the, uh, the, the uh, altimeter, the speed tape there, and then the uh, artificial horizon. If you do the uh, digital one, you get a 1Q... Um, ISFD, I think is the acronym for it. It's a digital thing. You'll see it in Airbuses and Boeings when they get rid of the analog standby instruments. Uh, so if you like that. Uh, fuel dipstick. Uh, I'm not sure, again, if this is like something you can interact with, but uh, there are like dipsticks in the wings that uh, in the real world, uh, the, the maintenance crew could actually interact with to uh, manually check the fuel level if they needed to uh, corroborate whatever the computer was saying. 
the RCWS, I'm not remembering what that is off the top of my head. Again, without a manual, I'm having to do this a little bit blind. So um, <laughs> when we get a manual, I will I'll probably update some of these videos. And that's I just wanted to get somebody so you guys had something for release. Uh, tape displays. I'm not a fan of the tape displays, so I turn them off. Uh, you'll see when the video screens come on, uh, it'll look like digital round dials uh, here. Otherwise, they're straight up and down lines. That's the tape displays. I'm not a fan of the tape displays, but if you're into that kind, there you go. Um, high decel rate uh, uh, auto brake system. So uh, if you want the auto brake system to like really slam you, uh, slam your face to the windshield when it breaks, you could turn that on, I guess. Uh, single Q flight director, if you like the single Q, which is usually like an arrow uh, as opposed to the cross. The cross is what I fly with, and uh, that's the dual, uh, dual Q, uh, so I have it disabled for single Q. Uh, inhibit tire failure, uh, this, uh, I don't know if that's technically available yet anyway, but uh, I'm guessing that with uh, excessive heat and braking, your tires can blow, and so uh, I think that's a cool option to have since we don't really have many failures on here yet. Uh, might as well keep the tire failure on. So it's kind of because that's inhibiting the tire failure, not activating the tire failure. So by disabling it, you're allowing the tires to fail. It's kind of a weird way to say it. I would just say tire failure, enable, disable, but whatever. Uh, wind vector type. So if you want vector or track on your uh, ND to show the winds, I like the, uh, the vector mode. Uh, radio altitude, if you want to see that or hide that on your PFD, show hide. And the WBS installed, not installed, and again, I am not 100% what the WBS is off the top of my head. So, like I said, this is not a master class. Uh, this is a advanced tutorial series. There's many things I don't know. Uh, altitude alert type, uh, voice and tone, altitude, meh, it'll do that kind of thing. That sounds like a sheep. Uh, altitude alert conditions on, uh, on deviation or on capture or deviation. Uh, so it'll give us an alert when uh, those things happen. Uh, altitude alert exclusions. Uh, you can exclude those alerts if you're not in landing flaps or not in an FMS approach. Um, I would prefer to just alert me anytime so that way I know something wrong is going on. Uh, and then you can tell which callouts you want. So I've got them all enabled except the 300 foot callout uh, because they're, these ones are very helpful. 300 usually is a little bit redundant and it's also um, usually happens right around the... Um, the approaching minimums point anyway, and so I, I usually disable that. So, so 2,500, 1,500, 400, 200, 150, 40, 30, 20, 10, boom, done. All right, that's that. That's the cause. So crew alert warning system, I think is what that stands for, uh, which makes me wonder if uh, uh, WB, oh, no, I can't think of what that would be. Uh, <laughs> The last thing is performance. Uh, you can uh, tweak what the uh, FMS uh, kind of has as default systems for the, D1, the takeoff D rates and things like that. Um, I don't touch any of this. So, um, yeah, it just, I, I don't touch any of this. <laughs> you can mess with that if you want of your own accord. Okay, so what I've done is I have a, um, just to show you how this works, I have a flight plan I've done. The, this tutorial series is going to take us from Ontario, which is where we are right now in California, over to Salt Lake City. So I've already got that flight done on Simbrief. So all I have to do down here is say import flight plan, and it's going to do that. So there we go. We can see it. Um, it is uh, Ontario to Salt Lake City. I don't know what this 3683 is referencing. Uh, but we have an hour and 52 uh, minutes, air time an hour and 24 minutes, 33,000 feet, our cost index right there is 80, and there is our plan, our block fuel, our en route fuel, contingency fuel, our taxi fuel, any extra fuel we loaded, alternate fuel, reserve fuel, estimated zero fuel weight, estimated takeoff weight, and the estimated landing weight. So all of the pertinent info is just right there at our fingertips, which is very nice. Now. What this will not show you, any because this is the only page you get to see, is your um, <clears throat> actual OFP, your operational flight plan. So uh, that may be something they implement eventually because I feel for a lot of people that would be very helpful. For me, I have a second monitor, so I just have that over there. Uh, but you have most of the data you need at your fingertips right here anyway. Uh, but there is some stuff that people would prefer to have that is not going to be on here. All right, so there's a couple different ways uh, you can proceed from here. You can take this information and manually load the payload over here so you can go back and, and load what you need to do. 
or you can just hit set payload and fuel, which is what I'm going to do. Boom. And it says payload sent. You saw the aircraft shiver a little bit and that has been updated. And if we go into the back now, in fact, I'll just do this. You can see the, uh, the bins are back because it's loaded the uh, payload. So that's done. You can also send the flight plan to the FMC. I'm not going to do that because uh, I'm going to show you guys how to load that manually. Uh, it doesn't load everything, but it loads the flight plan is really all it's doing. So the flight plan page minus SIDS and STARS. So it's not going to put the Sunshine 5 in. It's not going to put the Delta 6 in. You're obviously going to have to specify what your takeoff and landing runways are. All that stuff you have to do anyway. So it's a little bit of a shortcut, especially if you have a really long route. Remember, the MD-11 is uh, got very long legs, so it can fly very far routes and you could have a flight plan that is like three lines long and who wants to sit there and put all that into the FMC. So if that's the case, uh, that can be very helpful for us today. Uh, not so much and I want to show you guys how to do it the, the uh, normal way anyway, so we're not going to do that. You can also view the departure airport charts and the arrival charts if you connect your um, tablet to Simbrief, I, I'm sorry, to uh, Navigraph. I don't have mine connected right now and I don't want to go through the rigmarole. You're just going to see the charts on the screen. Uh, just believe me, they're there. And then if you need to reload the flight plan, so this is, uh, you make changes, you change your destination, you know, whatever you do, uh, you hit that and it'll refresh this page with the, the latest from Simbrief. So that's all there is to that. Okay, so that is the uh, the options as they stand now in the uh, the EFB. <clears throat> you have one on both sides. They are linked to each other. So if I click that over there, it changes here. So they're not independent. Um, and I'm curious if I can I make this one go away. Oh, oh, there we go. Does it take them both? Yes. So they are linked in more ways than one. So you can't have one or the other. You have to have both or none. So they are identical of each other. They're not independent. So just be aware of that. Uh, in the next video, we're going to fire up the aircraft and go over some cockpit familiarization. Actually, I don't know if we're going to fire up the aircraft, but we'll, we'll at least go over the cockpit familiarization. And then uh, we'll be coming back to do the actual pre-flight and engine start uh, setting for our flight. All right. Again, uh, this is an exciting aircraft. If you're looking to, to get this or if uh, you, uh, if you uh, have just picked it up and you're wanting to fly this, uh, keep, uh, keep on with the, the videos here. I'm going to try and keep it uh, short and sweet so that way you can get through it. Uh, you can find me streaming over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mustafa. And uh, I stream there usually about three times a week, mostly flight sim, a few other things as well. And I'd love to see you over there. You can also join the uh, Discord. The link is down in the description below. Uh, feel free to ask questions on here on the video. But uh, if you really want uh, to join a great conversation and, and get your uh, questions answered by not just me, but by a whole bunch of other people that are in my Discord community that are very knowledgeable, uh, that's the way to go is join the Discord. And, uh, and ultimately, uh, hit the follow button on the, uh, the Twitch channel as well. I'd appreciate it. So That's going to do it for me. We'll see you on the next video.